The Ice Age was ending and the animals of the valley were enjoying their warmer world. There were water slides to zip down and pools to splash into. But at a camp run by Sid the Sloth, the kids were doing more than sliding and splashing. They were making a pinata out of their camp counselor. Sid was grateful when his friends Manny the Mammoth and Diego the Sabertooth Tiger rescued him, but he resented their saying that he wasn't qualified to run a camp. He thought the kids looked up to him. You guys never think I can do anything, but I'm an equal member of this herd, Sid complained. I made this herd, so you need to start treating me with some respect. The others scoffed, but Sid was determined to prove himself. Sid climbed all the way to the top of the ice wall that encircled the valley to a water slide that ran straight down the cliff. Manny and Diego followed and tried to talk him down. No way! I'm going to be the first to jump off the eviscerator, Sid boasted. And then you guys are going to have to start showing me some respect. Sid jumped, but Manny caught him with his trunk. He threw Sid backward, away from the falls, then lost his balance and slid after him. They both crashed into Diego and skidded out onto a sheet of ice. Diego slid farther than the others. He was on a thin sheet of ice over an enormous lake. When the ice started to crumble under his weight, Diego raced back and jumped up on Manny to stay dry. Sid teased him. You know, if I didn't know you better, Diego, I'd think you were afraid of the water. Diego grabbed Sid by the throat. Okay, okay, good thing I know you better. He choked. From the top of the wall, the friends could see that their home was now surrounded by a lake. The ice sheet had almost completely melted. Very soon, water would pour down and flood the valley, filling it up like a bowl. Hmm, maybe we can rapidly evolve into water creatures, said Sid. As they turned to go back and warn everyone, Sid jumped up and down on the flimsy ice. Jeez, this whole thing's a piece of junk. I can't believe I live here, he said. The ice bridge broke under his feet and the friends fell down the eviscerator. Manny, Sid, and Diego landed safely and skidded into a crowd. They told everyone what they had seen at the top of the valley, but no one believed it would really flood. Then a vulture swooped in and confirmed their story. In three days' time, the bird said, the whole area would be underwater. If the animals could make it to the end of the valley by then, there was a boat that would carry them to safety. If not, he and the other vultures would eat very well. The animals began their long journey out of the valley. As they traveled, the rumor went around that Manny was the last of the mammoths. Manny stopped at a pool and looked at his reflection. He worried that they might be right. Sid tried to cheer him up. But Manny, look at the bright side. You have us, he said. That didn't seem to help. Just when Manny had given up hope of finding another mammoth, one fell out of a tree beside him. Her name was Ellie, and she was beautiful. There was just one problem. Ellie thought she was a possum. Ellie introduced her brothers, Crash and Eddie. Sid and Diego had already met the little pranksters who had fired pebbles at them and led them on a chase. Manny was not comfortable with the idea of a mammoth who played dead and slept in trees. But Sid warned, Manny, brink of extinction's a bad time to be picky. Sid asked Ellie and her brothers to travel with them. Diego was lagging behind. He worried that the ice would break. Oh, Diego, come on, said Sid. The ice may be thin, but it's strong enough to hold a 10-ton mammoth and a 9-ton possum. Manny watched Ellie doing silly stunts with Crash and Eddie, like rolling downhill on a log. He sarcastically asked if Sid really thought this was the girl for him. Oh, yeah, said Sid. She's tons of fun, and you're no fun at all. They found a place to camp for the night. Manny cleared logs while Ellie played chase with her brothers. Ellie wriggled under one of the logs, possum-like, and got stuck. Manny rescued her by picking up the log in his tusks and hurling it aside. When he did so, the log crashed through some weeping willow branches and opened up a path they had not noticed before. Ellie recognized it. Ellie remembered walking down this path before when she was very young. It had been covered in snow then, and she had been cold and alone. 
She had stopped under a tree where a possum family found her. Suddenly, Ellie realized that she had been adopted. She put her foot into a huge footprint that Manny had made. It fit. She was a mammoth after all. Meanwhile, Sid go to Diego about his fear of the water. Diego insisted that he wasn't afraid, that fear was for prey. Well, then you're letting the water make you its prey, teased Sid. Just jump in and trust your instincts. Sid suspended himself from a vine and demonstrated swimming strokes. You know, most animals can swim as babies, he said. And for a tiger, it's like crawling on your belly to stalk helpless prey. Claw, kick, claw, kick, I'm stalking the prey. Diego had had enough. He cut the vine with a claw and told Sid he was sinking. That night, Sid was kidnapped by a tribe of mini-sloths. They had been spying on him and had seen him build campfires. The mini-sloths built a statue of Sid and hailed him as the Fire King. Fire King? Said Sid. Hmm. Well, you know, it's about time someone recognized my true potential. Let there be fire! He struck two rocks together and lit some bubbling tar on fire. The mini-sloths cheered. The tribe bowed down before Sid and copied everything he did. Now that's what I call respect, said Sid. <laughs> if only the guys could see me now! Then the mini-sloths threw him into a flaming tar pit as a sacrifice to try to avoid the flood. Miraculously, the vines that tied him caught on a rock ledge and spun Sid back up out of the pit like a yo-yo. He crashed into the statue and rolled back toward the campsite, where, of course, no one believed a word of his story. On the third day of their journey, the day the vulture had said would bring the flood, the group saw the great bark boat in the distance. Animals were pouring up the mountainside to reach it. Manny and his friends were almost there, but first they would have to cross the geyser fields. Deadly jets of boiling hot water and steam burst from the ground. Ellie said they should turn back and go around. Manny said there wasn't time. He insisted that they had to go through. Ellie refused. She and the possums turned back. Manny charged through with Diego and Sid chasing him. Manny, Diego, and Sid barely made it through the geyser fields. In the boat line, they looked frantically for Ellie and the possums. Crash and Eddie raced up to Manny. Ellie had been trapped in a cave-in, they said. As the friends turned back to find her, the flood rolled in. Manny swam toward the cave where Ellie was trapped. The possums were being washed away by the flood. Sid dove in to rescue them, but he hit his head and was knocked unconscious. Crash and Eddie grabbed a branch that was sticking up out of the water, and they caught Sid as he floated by. But the possums were losing their hold. Diego was their only hope and he was terrified of the water. The possums lost hold of Sid, and he started to sink. Diego forced himself to jump in. He used Sid's stalking the prey strokes and found that he really could swim. Back on land, Sid woke up and thanked him. Diego said it was nothing. Most animals can swim as babies, you know, he smiled. Yeah, but not tigers, said Sid. I left that part out. Manny found a huge tree trunk floating in the water. He tried to use it to pry apart the rocks where Ellie was trapped, but the rocks wouldn't budge, and the water continued to rise. As Manny struggled with the log, something grabbed the mammoth and pulled him underwater. Two monstrous fish attacked Manny. He fought them and returned to the surface for a breath. When he dived again, he had a plan. Manny swam to the log which was now underwater and waited for the fish to attack. At the last moment, Manny dodged aside and the fish hit the log with full force. The rocks came free and crashed into the depths with the fish beneath them. Manny got Ellie out of the cave and they swam to join Diego, Sid, and the possums. We're gonna live! <laughs> Sid rejoiced, but the water kept rising and the last bit of land in the valley was quickly disappearing. Sid moaned, We're gonna die! Then the herd noticed a crack in the ice wall. 
The wall broke open and the floodwaters rushed out of the valley. Manny and his friends were on dry ground again. They watched the huge bark boat land safely. All the animals happily disembarked and the vultures flew away. Suddenly, the tribe of mini sloths appeared and bowed down to Sid. They thanked the Fire King for averting the flood and asked him to join them. Diego intervened. He said that Sid's herd needed him, that Sid was the gooey, sticky stuff that held them together. Sid made this herd, Diego said, and they would be nothing without him. You mean it? Sid asked and hugged him. The animals heard heavy footsteps headed their way. They looked up to see a large herd of mammoths marching through the gap in the ice wall. Manny and Ellie were not the last ones. Ellie fell in line with the other mammoths, but Manny didn't want to leave his friends. He couldn't bring himself to tell Ellie how he felt about her or ask her to stay. She and the possums reluctantly turned away and left Manny behind. Diego and Sid told Manny that he should go after Ellie, even if it meant breaking up the herd. They said they would always be there for him. Manny was grateful. He said he'd keep in touch. Manny ran after the mammoth herd and called Ellie's name. She turned back and looked for him. Then he dropped out of a tree beside her. Manny told Ellie that he wanted to be with her and hoped she wanted to be with him, too. Ellie said Manny was possum enough for her. Sid and Diego watched them, then turned to leave. Well, it's just you and me now, Sid said. Two bachelors knocking about in the wild. Woohoo! Diego said that was fine, but he was not going to carry Sid. Manny picked Sid up and said he would carry him. Diego was startled. He pointed out that Manny's herd was leaving. Manny agreed. Now it was. This was his herd, and Ellie's too. They walked off together, one big happy family.